My name is Gustavo Teixeira. I'm leading the Excellence in Breeding uh, Module 4, the, the Breeding Operation and Phenotyping. And today we, it's the first webinar from a series that we want to organize to, to create uh, kind of a, uh, an opportunity to share experience re, uh, regarding operational excellence. Today we will have a chance to see some uh, good examples and also start learning some tools. Um, so the idea on these webinars is to not only expose uh, everyone uh, to different tools, operational excellence tools, and you will learn some, but also give the chance to, to, to show the, the progress that uh, breeding programs and CGIR in general or national programs too uh, are making in their programs related to the adoption of operational excellence uh, practices. So why operational excellence you know, and uh, why for breeding? Before, uh, uh, first I'd like to, to put some, some uh, thoughts on, on, on comp compare, on, on really um, think on what would be the best, uh, the best environment to, to work. So in this uh, slide here, I'd like to, 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 to ask you to think on which would be the, the company here or the, the, the manufacturer that has the best chance to produce better products or cheaper products or produce faster. And, and to me, I think this one here in, in our right, uh, the blue box, it has better chance. And the reason why is because the, the operator here or the, the, the employee can find easily the materials, can find easily the, the, the tools, less chance to, 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 to damage the, 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 the materials. So to me, this one here in, the, in, in our, uh, our right here has a better chance to produce better product, produce cheaper products because they will produce fast. So which hospital would you trust more? This one in the left or this one in the right? And is it, they are the same hospital. And there are studies showing that an organizing waiting room, this is a waiting, waiting room in the, in the same hospital, can reduce the waiting time by 25%, meaning that this one you can be uh, or attended 25% their chance to be 25% time uh, or faster than in this one here or, or faster or reduce the, 20, the, uh, the time by 20% chance. So in both cases, we are talking about organizational models. They applied lean methodologies, but does it work for breeding? Yeah, and I, I'd like to, to ask you to think also which one would you prefer to have, where you would prefer to, to have your seed stored, here or there? And the answer, yes, operational excellence is for everything, including breeding too. And it's not a matter of budget, it's a matter of mindset. It's a matter of how, to, how, you think, how we think, how we organize our things. So we need to deliver higher rate of genetic gain. So this is the goal. However, go without a plan is just a wish. So our, this is what we, we want to, to, to help with the, to, to think this goal, this vision, apply some tools and helping to, 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 to adopt these tools to achieve some goal. So uh, to start this uh, series of webinars for the operational excellence, I'd like to invite uh, Sharifa, to present the, the success uh, or the, the 
how how they are managing the continuous improvement uh, implementation at Erie. Sharifa is the head of uh, of uh, a research support unit in Erie, and she's leading that um, implementation there. Sharifa, uh, the floor is yours. I hope that you are there. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm here. Thank you, Gustavo. Uh, okay, so uh, hello, everyone. Okay, let me share my screen. Yeah. Okay. Sharifa, I just want uh, before I, I so if you, anyone if you have any question, uh, please put in the chat and we will uh, respond to all the questions at the end of all pre of the presentations. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I hope you guys can see my screen. Hello. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we can yes. See you. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, so, good day, good morning, good afternoon, good evening um, to all of you. Thank you for joining this um, webinar, this monthly webinar that we're going to be having. And I have the uh, privilege to be the first um, speaker. So, um, before I go on to the uh, actual presentation, um, I want to and, and talk about operational excellence rather than just um, continuous improvement at Erie. Um, I want to also um, set a bit of context um, as well on uh, because it can explain how um, doing how we can do this in Erie uh, because of how we are placed in Erie as well. So before that, um, let me introduce myself first. I'm Sharifa um, and I'm the platform leader for in Integrative Research Support or IRS for short. And this platform handles all the research operations, uh, primarily breeding operations. So basically we are the service people. Um, uh, so let me go to the next slide. Okay. So basically this slide shows the research structure in Erie where integrative research platform, support platform is here. Um, and it sits uh, as an equal counterpart to all the other research uh, platforms. So I think by placing us this basically provide us equal footing in terms of setting certain initiatives uh, in Erie, which includes this um, operational excellence, um, which um, all the other tools that we are uh, implementing um, in the long run. And this slide shows how we are organized in a platform. As I mentioned, we cover all research operations from field operations um, all the way to breeding IT. And I think all the heads here are in the audience. Um, so, as, um, so to integrate all these research operation needs, uh, we have a breeding operations manager that sits in between um, our platform and also the rice breeding platform. So basically um, this function, this, this um, uh, position function as a single point of contact between services and research. And since we are like almost 99% of our services um, are towards providing uh, research support to rice breeding, hence the positioning of this um, role. So what is uh, operational excellence? Um, basically, um, there's so many definitions actually, if you Google it, uh, and, but this one is, what I, is the one that I like best. Um, it's a philosophy of the workplace where problem solving, teamwork, and leadership results in continuous improvement in an organization. The process involves focusing on the customer's needs, keeping the employees positive and empowered, and continually improving the current activities in the workplace. And why I like this definition the best is um, because it says exactly what we are doing uh, at Erie. So now to establish um, operational excellence culture, uh, there are five essential conditions. Um, and these conditions, uh, when I show it, you will realize why I say, um, showing you guys um, how we are uh, structured in Erie um, is an important um, uh, piece of this um, uh, essential, uh, five essential conditions. So basically there are, these five um, essential conditions uh, provide the necessary foundation upon which the tools of organizational excellence can be built upon. So number one is vision. 
Um, at Erie's, at Erie, um, uh, the IRS vision itself, not Erie's vision, but we have our own vision, uh, is to provide excellent research support and services at optimal cost across global Erie research operation network. Uh, this vision statement defines who we are, which is the research support and services team. How do we work? By providing excellent service at optimal cost. So that um, very simple, you, you, it says it all. Um, number two, you need to have um, how we organize ourselves um, has a major impact on our ability to get things done. Um, being, for example, as I mentioned earlier, the IRS platform uh, op is operating at the same level as all the other research platform. And this gives the signal that it is an important platform in Iris research ag agenda. Uh, we often heard companies say our people are our most important assets. Having the right people with the right frame of mind that understands the importance of delivering research excellence through service operations is super important towards achieving our vision. Uh, we must uphold the principles uh, of delivering quality research output while having great customer service mindset. So it's like being, uh, it's, it's, you need to have the balance between uh, delivering research and also uh, function like a, a, um, a customer service uh, people as well. And in order to do this, uh, operational excellence um, also provide tools such as quality management system, continuous improvement, process mapping, work planning, and so on. And we, I think we use most of this in terms of in establishing the way we work um, uh, within this platform. So now you know what is operational excellence and you know what you need to have to set it up in, uh, in the institution. So what do you do with this information? So what we did is we developed a three year operational plan um, because we can't just wake up and do work and continue to deliver, right? There need to be an objective where we are going in the at least three year time or five years or whatever that you decide. So we decide we wanna, um, because my contract says three years. So <laughs> I decide to, to where I want to bring my team within the next uh, three years. And that is our operational plan. And the objective of, of um, this operational plan is to cultivate a culture of excellence in the delivery of research services um, and support in ERI and across the global ERI network towards becoming the best in class integrated research support system. So I highlighted the two um, important um, uh, words here, culture of excellence and best in class. That's where we want to be. Um, so now we know where we are going. Uh, we basically, if we have nothing yet, it's like going to climb a mountain, Mount Everest maybe, very daunting. Can we do this? Um, to know that we need to take a good hard look at ourselves uh, and ask some hard questions as well. Um, so you guys know already who we are, but do we ourselves know who we are and where we are in terms of um, the delivery of the research support services? Um, um, many people can do the job, um, but you also need to I think just doing the job is not enough if we are trying to achieve um, um, excellence, uh, operational excellence, research excellence uh, as well. So you also need to know um, where you are so that you know what you need to do to get there, get where, be the best in class, and have a culture of excellence. But then do you know what does this look like? How do you know that you are already best in class? How do you know, have you reached that you have reached a culture of excellence, you have uh, implemented this. So you also need to know how, how, what does that look like? How do you measure so that you know that you have achieved it or you're on the way to achieve it, achieve those things. So, um, so we need a system to measure our progress year in and year out. So again, we are, now we are climbing this Mount Everest or whatever mountain. Um, that means there needs to be some serious prepping, right? You can't just wake up one morning and do those things. Um, so we reduce, um, so the objective is big, um, the target is huge. Um, how do we reduce um, the whole thing so that it's implementable, doable? Um, we reduce the whole thing to bite size by dividing, by dividing the implementation strategy into two phases. So one, the first phase, um, which took a whole year of last year, um, we, the main aim is to strengthen the team first. 
we have already got the team. Uh, we need to assess where they are, what we need to do. Uh, we need to provide the right equipment, um, so to speak, through training and introduction to the important tools of operational excellence, such as continuous improvement, uh, quality management system, um, and all those things. And we need to also form a better interaction between the platforms uh, as well, since they are our clients, so to speak. And then in the second phase, um, we essentially use all the prep that we have done in the first phase to, um, uh, in our day-to-day, -day, basically implement it in our day-to-day -day work. And also then from there, expand our activity uh, beyond HQ, um, even possibly beyond Erie as we are approaching 1CG. So that's what we did. Um, we started developing quality management system, uh, ISO 9001 in the beginning of 2020. Um, we went through uh, internal, train, uh, internal audit training and so on. And we recently, uh, I'm happy to note here that we recently completed the first internal audit um, of um, two of our clusters. Um, and later this year, we will be conducting our first management review for those clusters as well. Um, so as you can see, it's not easy. It takes time uh, and persistence um, from everyone in the team uh, to achieve this. Um, but we are also lucky because one of our cluster lead um, is kind of, uh, it, it has uh, the expertise or the experience to set this up. So she and a couple of others who has experience as well um, lead the whole process. Um, so um, it is, um, so it's basically very much internal um, uh, development uh, through internal uh, experience as well. Um, then, uh, one of the components within the quality management system is the continuous improvement. And with the training that we received from EIB uh, starting from early last year or mid last year, um, it provides us with a good foundation to make the whole exercise very fruitful in transforming the way we work. Um, and I think after this, my colleague um, June Korea will show uh, you how, uh, show you, share with you a project that uh, is implemented through continuous improvement um, methodologies that has an impact on um, the way we work. So basically now we have got both initiative uh, in place, uh, but how do we make it sustainable, uh, making it into a culture, so to speak. So to do that together with the EIB team, Gustavo and Teresa, we develop a roadmap um, for ERI um, that will chart what we need to do in the long run. Uh, we put together a core team um, with champions um, uh, for HQ and also for the regions um, that are responsible to see this through. Um, we had a team of six to eight members that are currently ongo uh, undergoing training um, and we'll we will continue to build the skills of our people through the right training again and most importantly work very closely with the breeding leadership um, so that the improvements that are being made using these tools will feed directly into the breeding improvement. So I think we get very good support from the RISE breeding leadership um, to continue to do this and work with them uh, to identify future projects. Um, and these are some of the outcomes um, from this exercise. Um, we made tremendous improvements in various areas within the breeding operational process, um, as you can see here. Um, um, some of the improvements um, are more than 100%. Uh, for example, the capacity of our hybridization. We improve it to 163%. So, okay. Um, so again, um, so we made tremendous improvement in various areas within the breeding operational process and institutionalized this in our SOP. So again, connecting continuous improvement with our quality management system as well. Um, so as you can see from this data, the improvements are, are, are huge. Um, so it's the, the possibility of, uh, uh, and it, it's, it's there, the possibility of making great improvement is there just by applying um, some of these tools not even all of it. So one of the things um, that um, we continuously do is connect with the researchers to understand their needs. Their feedback is being used to improve our services. Um, this supports the need for customer feedback that is required under quality management systems, again, linking quality management system and continuous improvement. 
Um, and so in summary, uh, we have done quite a lot in the last two years, I would say, um, to establish operational excellence practices in Erie, but there is still a lot more to be done. We really want to we professionalize our service operations. Um, that's the um, aim um, in terms of for the people, uh, for, the, for the staff within the platform. Um, I think there is a lot to be gained when the research operations are being carried out professionally. Uh, we want to move to, towards total consolidation, uh, meaning no more work, uh, no more uh, duplicate works being done in smaller shops within the research team. So everything to be done through uh, research support uh, platform uh, teams. So this will definitely increase um, the work and cost efficiency. Uh, and we want to institutionalize a system of work planning, which will link up all the processes within the resource, uh, including resource budgeting. So I think this is where we are heading. Um, and I, this is my last slide. And with that, um, I thank you for listening. Now, so um, I mentioned earlier that the next, um, stop share, the next uh, presentation will be from my colleague, um, June Correa. He will talk about one of the projects that we did um, last year to improve um, the, the way we manage the uh, experimental um, uh, feel uh, in Erie. So uh, June is the head of um, experimental station um, in Erie as well. So June, take it away. Hello. Uh, yeah. Uh, let me check first my my audio if it's working. Can you hear me, Sharifa? Everyone, can you hear? Me? I can hear you just fine. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. So thank you very much, Sharifa. Um, your <clears throat> your presentation was actually a very good introduction to my presentation um, because my objective uh, with my presentation is uh, to share our experience on continuous improvement and how this significantly and positively impacted our operations. So this is also an invitation for all of you who are not yet uh, into continuous improvement to join the Operational Excellence Training Sessions with EID. Oh, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. So let me share my screen now. Uh, share. Can you see my screen now? Yeah, it looks good. Okay, good. So yeah, so yeah. So first, let me greet everyone. Um, magandang umaga or and magandang gabi. That is good morning and good evening to everyone. So before I proceed with my presentation, uh, first a big shout out to my teammates. Uh, I acknowledge the members of our team who work on this project. Um, our partners from Finance, Bel Valdinaro, Len Punsalan, and Marie San Gabriel. From Human Resources, Cheryl Mercado, and of course from my very own unit, uh, Edgy Aranda, Rick Hernandez, and of course our platform leader, uh, Dr. Sharifa Alwi as our sponsor and advisor. Uh, allow me to emphasize that this exercise was actually a, a real team effort and all of the members of our team contributed to the achievement of our objectives while having fun. Let me emphasize that, while having fun. So um, in this presentation, I will take I will be talking about land use, about problem solving and mapping tools, uh, continuous improvement, field services, of course. Uh, I will also mention full cost recovery, FCR, and one corporate system. So um, a quick definition. So the, for those who are not familiar with some of these terms, uh, full cost recovery is Iris' approach to securing funds uh, to cover all uh, direct and operational costs and, that, and including overheads. Um, I hope you don't ask me to explain that any further. Um, meantime, uh, one corporate system is the system or software we are using here in Piri um, for most of our daily transactions like requests and purchases. So let me start with this purpose statement. So this is one of the continuous improvement tools that we learned 
and we use to to for our project. So <clears throat> this um, purpose statement was actually to this would create uh, the purpose or vision and order and and in order to understand this easily, the purpose statement should be of course should be um, specific. Should, it should be concise and clear and goal oriented. So we. Uh, we got this purpose statement uh, from our project charter. So our project charter, uh, we um, tried to define the problem or the, and the scenario behind this problem. So um, as you can see here, we, we defined that the problem uh, we had in IRI uh, was the declining land use. So this is the main problem. And we uh, identified that uh, the main cause of this decline in land use is the high rental cost because of FCR. So, um, so at, at the beginning, we thought that in order to increase the land use, we had to bring the cost of land rent down. But little did we know that, uh, that, that, that it's more complicated than that. Okay, so... So let me show you an, a map of the Erie farm. So the, the delineated area on this map is about 200 hectares. So this is where most of Erie's research, uh, research is co being conducted. During its first four decades, Erie was, uh, the Erie farm was teeming with research activities. In fact, um, Erie had to expand its area twice in order to accommodate the number of field experiments. Sad to say, um, in the last 15 years, the amount of land use uh, for research in Erie has been decreasing. And in fact, currently our land use is less than 50 hectares per season. So, and when we first look at this situation, we, we were very quick and we were, we were ready to blame FCR uh, for the decline in land use. So as you can see here, FCR was implemented sometime in 2010. 2010. But again, we, with this um, CI training, we realized that uh, this, this blaming game was a bit too simplistic. So um, what we did is to fully understand the context of uh, the purpose statement, we first had to identify the keywords and phrases from the project charter, so we can derive a, a better purpose statement. So our initial purpose statement uh, reads something like this. So to reduce high cost of land rent in Erie Farm through rationalized FCR to meet the needs of customers and to increase land utilization by optimizing cost drivers and land requirement. So our group, we set out to evaluate factors influencing land use and review FCR on land rent. So one of the tools we use in our CI training is the fish, fish bone diagram. So the fish bone diagram helps us to see the many possibilities of uh, the possible, the many possible causes of low land utilization in the farm. So we ask the question, why is land use decreasing? So again, as I said in our introduction, this is one of the, uh, this, this fishbone diagram is one of the tools that help us realize that FCR is not the main problem, let alone the problem itself. Um, so the fish diagram was actually an eye, an eye opener to me, uh, to, to especially uh, to, to our group, especially to me. So in our fishbone diagram, we identify possible causes based on several categories. So as you can see here in the slide, we have uh, environment, people, method, measurement, machine, and material. So under the method category, we listed the following, uh, the land rental system, the lack of automated irrigation system, and that the fact that some research requires smaller areas. And, and that there was no, someone also in our group said that there was no uh, apparent marketing or promotional strategy that would, you know, uh, would encourage uh, increase in land use. So under people category, 
we included insufficient number of trained staff as well as uh, uh, insufficient skilled manpower. So in the environment section, uh, we named, uh, we identified unhealthy fields or un unsuitable lands because uh, because of the uh, decrease in land use, we had so many vacant fields and these fields are sometimes left unkept or unmanaged and this could be, uh, be possible habitats of pests and diseases. And also in the measurement department, we put in as possible causes um, declining research budget, uh, expensive land rent, and uh, better research methodologies. And under machine sector, there, there is the lack of equipment maintenance, old and unavailable equipment, and a deficiency in the number of equipment. And finally, under the materials category, we have less projects less funds for project for research and more projects outside of HQ. So once we have identified the possible causes, each member of the group uh, then had seven votes to, to see, to, to identify which of these possible causes is the, is the dominant, the dominant uh, cause that is uh, causing the land use, low land utilization. So I will discuss later in the interrelationship um diagram which I, um which causes cause uh, causes were that stood out but our takeaway from this diagram is that we really need to look at the costs and effects and it really requires a lot of heads to be able to draw different possible causes so in this uh, interrelationship diagram this is actually like part two of the fishbone um diagram so after the voting process in the fishbone, we now have identified the dominant causes. So, uh, so we isolated seven of the most voted on causes or factors, and we analyzed their interrelationships. So we drew lines uh, from each factor to another to show the cost and effect relationships. Please note that um, expensive land rent has been identified as one of the dominant factors. Um, but after all the voting, after all that has been said and done, it turned out that it was actually the least among the factors. So the top three, I'll give you the top three based on our voting. So the, the second runner up is the declining re research budget, which is actually, I think, being experienced by everyone right now, even in 1CG. The second runner up, which is the lack of planning or lack of uh, even, we could say uh, planning uh, in terms of utilization, land utilization. And the winner, drum roll please. So the most dominant uh, cost was the more projects. Uh, it turned out that there were more projects being conducted outside of EVHQ. So, and surprisingly, it turns out that that expensive land rent is the effect of the main or the main consequence of the dominant factors. So yeah, so that's kind of interesting to us. So with this realization, we now, uh, we went actually, we, we went back to our drawing boards and we revised our purpose statement, which now reads, um, improving land rental operations through rationalized FCR, and improvements on uh, improvements of related services to meet the needs of our customers. So we were no longer focused on reducing the land rent costs, but we were more into uh, we were looking into the improvements that we had to implement as a way to possibly increase the land use in the Erie Farm. Okay. So once we have identified the the culprits, I mean the factors influencing the decline in land use, we set out to name the qualities uh, of our services that are critical to our customers and critical to quality. So especially to our immediate clients. So here, the, the researchers who use our fields for their experiments. So I, I highlighted here quality services and, and facilities and wider coverage of their research funds because this played 
a crucial role in identifying our improvements. And as mentioned by uh, our platform leader earlier, Dr. Uh, Dr. Sharifa, we were, um, we were already at this point during the uh, training, our continuous improvement training last year, we were doing, uh, we were establishing a quality management system. So this went hand in hand uh, with our uh, continuous improvement and this address does uh, quality to quality critical to quality measures like SOP, SOPs and training of staff. So this actually formed a big part of our improvement plan. So, um, so our improvement plan, so we identified the following activities uh, and we plotted out the schedule the, that we needed to conduct in order to uh, implement our improvements. So number one, we developed a cost calculator. So this, cal cost calculator was, was meant to help our clients monitor their seasonal ex, uh, expenses. Also, we came up with a uh, guideline, some guidelines. Since we were changing our rental system, uh, it was just appropriate to come up with some guidelines for a smooth transition. For We also developed a smart sheet or a, a field planner. So this one, um, was used to help us in volume forecasting. So we also plan to uh, uh, come up with a one product, one OCS product. So while the original plan was to lump all services into one product, we realized that this was not very practical. So we decided to break uh, to break down or to divide our services into three main main uh, service packages, which I will explain in a little bit. Uh, we also had to uh, change or revise some of the job descriptions of our staff. We have to put in some new schedules. And of course, we have to conduct info sessions to start the implementation of our in, uh, identified improvements. So in this uh, control plan, in order to sustain the gains of our uh, improvement plan, we identified measures we needed to monitor to make sure that uh, customer requirements are, will be met. Uh, while ensuring that our operations are also sustainable. For, for our control plan, first we wanted to, to monitor and measure the amount of our recoveries. So first we, so we targeted at least 10% uh, of costs incurred. So we want to recover 10%, at least 10%. And then uh, we also uh, examine our actual land uh, utilization per season. Since we have two seasons per year, um, uh, we, we are monitoring, uh, we have coincided with our two seasons. So we targeted at least 35% land utilization. So for cost, customer response and feedback, we wanted to do this every end of each season. So we wanted to know from our clients what services were useful to them and what services still needed some improvement. So we, target, we targeted at least 80% satisfaction rating. So we also want to ensure that our, our, in terms of our staff, we also want to make sure that they were happy with their jobs. So we also monitored and measured the satisfaction of our coworkers. Again, we wanted to get at least 85%, 80% net satisfaction. So for this, for net results of our operations, uh, this is basically the recoveries versus our expenses. So we, we just put here, if we get break even, so that would be good enough for us, so we can sleep tightly at night. So, um, and if our targets are not met, then we will have to conduct a root cause analysis in, uh, in order to, to, to find out that problem and find solutions. So, so this, is, this is one of the, the big improvements that we, we, we did. Um, so we wanted to create uh, one service package from, from all of the individual services. As you can see here, we, we have almost two dozen uh, kinds of services. So each season, meaning twice a year, one theory researcher would have to request the services individually for each of the experiments they conduct. With our improvement plan, we wanted to reduce these services into one big service package. Again, after much deliberation, we realized that one big package was not practical, mainly because of charging issues. So we decided to group these services into three main 
packages. So these are the three main packages. So we develop a field use service package, crop maintenance package, and post production to ship seed shipment package. So the post production uh, package is actually an expansion of our uh, existing post harvest services, which when we uh, which when implemented, this will cover uh, from harvesting to seed shipment. So this is still uh, uh, in the works together with the crop maintenance package. We hope to launch this uh, sometime in 2022 uh, dry season. So going back to the field use service package, we have launched and implemented this since 2021 dry season. And we are glad to inform you that because of this improvement, we have 100% recovery on our land rent and irrigation every season. And not to mention the 50% savings on time on processing OCS requests. Oops. And, uh, and this improvement also provided us with a way to capture seasonal information and data from our customers for our resource mobilization. So before I end my presentation, I'd like to just to show you our field planner that we developed together with our service packages. So this is our way of collecting seasonal volume forecast for land use. So the data from this field planner is then collected in a spreadsheet, which we use to determine our requirement for manpower and equipment. So in summary, so our group was able to, uh, to, to identify, number one, identify dominant causes why land use was decreasing. And then using maps and diagrams and process flows, we developed an improvement plan for our land land system. Uh, to move us forward in engaging more effectively and efficiently with our clients while considering the funding environment that he is, uh, is currently in. And finally, as part of our improvement plan, we developed, we deployed a new service package that already included land rent, irrigation services, and land preparation, and a field planner to capture our data. So ultimately, our goal is to help Erie fulfill its mission in reducing hunger and poverty. We hope that this small project was able to uh, help Iri uh, in, in a small way with this small contribution from our team. So I leave you with this quote from Mark Twain. Stay safe, everyone. And thank you very much. And I turn you over now to Teresa for the 5S presentation. Thank you. Hello, everybody. This is Teresa Heitman, and I am working with uh, EIB for the past couple of years to help them, to help all of you create a culture, a stronger culture of continuous improvement. So along with our webinar, where you've seen some real things that are happening out there, I also want to do a little bit of skill development and teach a simple tool at each one of our webinar series so that it's something that you can try on your own or with your team. So, and, and we are, as usual, we're, we're usually running a little bit late on our timing. So I will try to speed this up just a little bit so that you have a little <clears throat> time to ask questions. So the tool that I'm going to talk about today is called 5S Workplace Organization. And what it essentially means is there's a place for everything and everything is in its place. It's a methodology that results in a workplace that is clean, uncluttered, safe, and well-organized to help reduce non-value added activity, improve flow and optimize productivity. And those are some goals that we always seem to have in our organizations. It reshapes how we think about the workplace. As Gustavo mentioned in his opening comments, it's a mindset, it's a way of thinking. And we use these uh, tools and methodologies to help us implement um, what our way of, of thinking and, and our approach to our customers. And um, we have a lot of different tools that can help us do that. And 5S is one of them. It changes how people approach their work, workplaces and each other. And this is a pretty important one. It's a foundation for all improvement. 
because we start to develop some standard operating procedures and um, have organized workplace. And so when we have that, then we can start to improve even off of that even more. And it develops an organizational lifestyle and mindset for improvement. Five S's, it's pretty simple, stands for uh, five words that start with S in the English language. And think about the, where you're sitting right now at your workplace, you're uh, maybe at your desk, maybe you're in your, your lab, wherever you are, I want you to start to look around and see what you can do to improve your work area and be more, uh, more efficient and more productive as we go through these five S's. First, um, what do you need? That's our sort. What do you need at your workplace? Take out all unnecessary items. T things tend to pile up. We have um, maybe old equipment, old printers, um, old staplers, magic markers that don't work, those type of things at our desks. Let's get rid of everything that's not necessary for you to perform your work. Next step, set it in order. So what you have left, all those necessary items, how do we arrange them that makes a nice smooth flow of our work and they're easily accessible and we know where everything is. Third S is, is shine. Make sure that we have a way of cleaning up our work area. Maybe it's part of our work design that we take a few minutes every day to clean our work area. Are our machines that we're using in good working order? Do we have our maintenance routines in place? That type of thing. And then our standardized step is our fourth step make sure everyone is following the standard. So I might just mention that as we do this 5S, this is something that we, that we is a team oriented activity. Um, people should improve their own work area and together as a team. If we go in and we improve someone's team area for them or their work area for them, for them, chances are that they'll come back the next day and say, what in the world happened here? Um, this doesn't work for me, and they'll put everything back the way that it was. It's also important to know that things get that way just because. So, you know, things get cluttered just because that happens. So when we develop standards, we, we can have something to measure off of, and we can, we, we, we know what it's supposed to look like. So we can keep it from going backwards, back to those old habits when we make changes. And our last S, S is to sustain. How do we keep this system in place? Um, regular reviewing, because as you can see, the five S's are in a circle, which kind of indicates an iterative process. So we continue to improve. What can we do better? How can we organize our work better? How can we improve our flow? This is... Uh, the, so a demonstration of the, the sort step. I'm going to just show you some pictures from your um, organization. Getting all these machines out of this work area. Look what it does on the right. A nice organized work workspace, more space available even. Make sure that if there are things that you don't need in your work area, we call this a red tag system. Make sure you label it Put, you know, put it in maybe an area that's been designated for items that are going to be discarded. Maybe somebody else has a need for that item. They don't have to purchase it then. But make sure there's an expiry date on this so you actually get it out of your workplace and um, it doesn't exist <laughs> anymore. Um, safety. We're always thinking about safety when we're doing 5S. Here, maybe people came in from the field and they had their um, coolers that they were using out there. Maybe there's not a designated place for those coolers. So they end up piled up here in the lab. This kind of stuff happens, but it looks like a trip hazard to me. So maybe you can find a permanent home for those items and your workplace is less cluttered. You can get to your lab coats. Um, 5S and safety work very closely together. Maybe you had to get a bunch of samples out. They never got put back away. It's also very important to ask in these situations, why? You know, why did these, why did we not put these samples away? Maybe they don't have a place to, to live. So um, like I mentioned at the beginning, everything has a place and everything is in its place.
set in order. Um, questions to ask yourselves, which people use which items? Where are these items used? Where would it be most logical to place them? Get your team involved in this. If we do, um, this, this is a shared desk in one of a lab. They have reorganized the desk so things can be easily found. There's less clutter, clutter. When we have less clutter, we have less stress. It improves employee morale. Shine, clean up the work area, put tools and materials away, make it part of your work design every day. To make sure that there's a few minutes or time to um, set everything back up in an orderly fashion. And everyone takes responsibility for cleaning up their workspace daily. Wouldn't you much rather live on, uh, work in, in the lab that's on the right hand side? They very simply, the, a lot of times these little activities take very little time actually, 30 minutes, get a team together, you know, what belongs here, what doesn't, how can we organize this? It's very clear in the right hand side where the equipment goes. Um, it's very visual. You can see what inventory you even have of your, of your chemicals very easily. You can go even this far. Maybe you need all these tools at your desk. Um, you could label each one of these boxes. We call this somewhat of a shadow box, but if you use it, you need a red pen and a blue pen for different activities that you're doing, um, they have a home. You can tell very easily when something's missing. Very easy to, to set things back up at the end of the day. Another example, maybe your maintenance people have a movable cart like this. It's easy to see all of your equipment, what's missing, um, easy to put things away. Standardize. Standardize systematizes activities and turns effort into habits. So we need lots of, of standardizing so that we can change those habits that we have and we don't go back to the way things were. We might want to develop a standard operating procedure for 5S so that we keep areas organized and things don't get forgotten. Um, daily checklists work really well. Documenting the prop process for getting an asset written off may si save time in the future. So maybe you can't get rid of a machine because this is a huge issue with getting it off of the asset list and that's why it's still around. That's why it is important for you to ask why. Why, why is this machine still here, right? And maybe ask, you know, you get an answer to that and ask why again and can continue to ask why at least five times um, to get to the root cause of why um, something is actually happening or why um, piece of equipment or anything else is, or inventory is sitting in, in your area. Um, very, here's a, an example of standardizing. Very easy here. Very, you know, this happens to me all the time. When I have brooms stacked up in a corner and I want to get the one that's up against the wall, I end up all of these falling over, right? So um, maybe you, this is a simple tool that you can in, in implement to keep everything where it needs to be. You can see what's missing. Here's an advancement on that even. Maybe you have labeled um, with visual management all of your um your cleaning areas by color. You can easily tell what color of what cleaning utensil is missing. Seed storage and sustain. Once standard procedures for 5S are in place, how can we sustain the gains that we've made? So implementing systems to sustain the improvements, coming up with creative ways, lots of visual management, keeping things um, in their place. And I noticed that we just have five minutes left. So I will stop here actually, so that we have just a few minutes to answer some of your questions if you happen to have them. So I really appreciate your attention here today and your participation. Um, tell your friends and colleagues, and we'll be having this, um, this monthly um, webinar monthly on the third Wednesday of each month. Thanks, uh, Theresa. I have one, uh, we, Adifreeze put one question in the chat. 
I suppose this question is uh, to Sharifa. Um, how do you qualify optimal cost? What is its benchmark? Maybe other three, if you want to, to elaborate a bit more, feel free to turn on your cam uh, camera or, or in audio. Or maybe Sharifa, if you could, if you understand what he wants to. Ah, okay. Can I answer? I, I was not able to unmute myself just now. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, yes, so thank you for the question. Um, basically, there's not really a benchmark. What we did is we established um, the um, uh, cost driver. So basically, let's say for a certain service, how many of those, so for example, um, hybridization. Uh, how many crosses are you um, uh, going to make? So a thousand, two thousand, so on, and then uh, calculate um, uh, all the resources that's needed um, to perform that work, from uh, manpower cost uh, to all the the um, um, uh, tools and everything that you need to do that service, and then uh, based on if you say it's two thousand. Um, so there's a lot of interaction again with the breeders to know what kind of um, the, the demand that's needed so that you can set that. So obviously by doing it that way, the more you have, um, uh, the, uh, the higher the demand, the lower you can drive the cost down. So we use based on that because I think um, at the moment now, there is not uh, very much um, opportunity to, to benchmark because uh, in terms of specific um, um, uh, services. So that's how we did it at the moment. I hope that answers the question. Um, there's also uh, there's also a question from Aparna. Uh, how is IRS platform differ different from RBI platform? And where do services like uh, Double Health Ploy fall? Um, IRS platform, as I was saying, um, uh, as I was saying, um, we do the research operations. We do the research operations. Can you hear me? I guess. Yes. Uh, uh, IRS. <laughs> IRS. I was wondering whether am I talking on my own. Okay, IRS platform is basically, um, we do all the research operations, breeding operations, so on. RBI takes care of the science. So they, they decide what crosses to be made and then give us those, those things that needs to be done and we perform it for them. Um, data is collected. Um, some data is collected by us, some are uh, by them, but we are trying to move it elsewhere. So once we collected those data, they are the one doing the, the analysis. So again, they do the science part, we do the operation side. Um, we don't have double help ploy in rice yet. So, but if we do, I imagine the doing of the double help ploy will fall under IRS um, um, uh, job spec as well. Yeah, thanks, uh, Sharifa. Uh, we uh, just uh, as an example uh, in in you have the. Uh, the RGA and is done is managed by oh, our yeah. IRS. No? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. RGA hybridization work uh, are all done by IRS. Okay, so um, in respect of time, uh, I, we maybe we will. If you have any other question, please put it, put it in the chat. We can collect that that uh, questions and and send. Uh, to to the speakers and uh, we will try to to respond and send the the, the answer later to you. Uh, we, uh, as as Teresa mentioned, we hope to do that more more uh, every month. So uh, probably uh, with different uh, 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 similar as 5S, presented different tools, different uh, methodologies that you can apply in your uh, operation. Uh, 
Uh, also in our in EIB toolbox, we have uh, some materials there that you can access uh, and help you to, to apply these uh, methodologies in your breeding operation, in your operation in general. It doesn't matter if it's a breeding or whatever you work. Okay, so uh, thanks, thanks again for, for your time. Thanks for uh, joining us today. So ha have a great uh, rest of the week.